I guess we're on. Hi. So I'm Dunk Dinko with Brave Newbies. Who do you fly with? All right, that's pretty good. All right, you Twitch people, you need to put in chat. Just fill up the chat with your name and who you fly with. Okay. All right, let's get going. Uh, little technical difficulties here. So what I'm going to talk about today is what it's like to lead an alliance. Uh, not a lot of people get this fun, delush, delicious opportunity, uh, but uh, I do now. So um, your mileage may vary. This is just my experience. I talked to several other alliance leaders about their experiences. They're remarkably similar. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, basically, uh, leading an alliance in Brave is like nothing else in uh, video gaming. There's nothing like uh, EVE Online uh, in video gaming, and definitely leading alliance of a global community is pretty crazy. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, my path to CEO, which I never really wanted to be, and then we'll talk about the three things that I really think are the lessons learned. One's about honesty and authenticity. Uh, I want to talk about morale, and then we'll talk about delegation and trust, which are some of the hardest things you'll do. So who am I? For those that don't know me, uh, I've been playing EVE since about 20, 2008. Took a little break and then rejoined when uh, Brave Newbies got started about nine years ago. So I've been playing since then. Uh, you can read my screen here uh, of the things I like and dislike. Pineapple on a pizza is definitely delicious. <laughs> Uh, and this, uh, this graphic here, if you can see it, is me getting doomsdayed in a fax by some BL Titans. It was an awesome day. Um, so you can read that at your leisure. I've done a lot of stuff in EVE. Uh, I just started as a simple player who happened to know how to do ECM and logistics, and now I'm CEO. I was on the CSM about two years ago, just before the start of the pandemic. Uh, previously, I have done some talks about what, how to lead without being CEO at like some EVE Vegases. So, um, let's see if this works. It may not work. The truth is I don't want to be in charge, right? <laughs> I go to work every day, and I go to an office, and I have a staff, and I have to go to meetings, and I have to deal with other vice presidents and all that stuff. And uh, they pay me to do that, so I do it. I don't want to do that in my spare time. I don't want to be in charge, right? So I'm happy to help, and I help when I can, but like... So uh, I really didn't want to be CEO. So that's uh, E-Vegas uh, 2019. Uh, so, uh, Dunk, what happened? Oh, you can do better than that. Dunk, well, we had a war. <laughs> so uh, in that war, uh, Brave was in a really weird place. Our uh, CEO at the time, Kigali Kigali, was doing the tradition of going completely AFK. And so uh, Brave was run by this kind of consensus group of kind of people in charge. And we kind of stumbled into the war. And my job is kind of the spirit animal of Brave was to kind of motivate people. And I made some videos. And I was pretty sure the goons were going to collapse, like, I don't know, in a couple months. It was uh, uh, so still here. Absolutely. I'll get to that. Um, <laughs> So um, here we are, and it's been proven over and over that space democracy and space consensus really doesn't work in EVE. Uh, yet Bray was trying it, and we were in the middle of a war, and uh, the beginning of the war went great, and then it didn't go so great, and we started getting our butts kicked in our home systems, or our home regions of catch and impasse. And uh, thank you, Initiative. <laughs> and so, um, you know, obviously in any group there's going to be disagreements, uh, but ours leaked very publicly in the middle of a war in front of everybody. And that was very bad because it showed me basically not telling the truth to the people and brave about what was really going on. And that was a big bad thing to do. So as a result, uh, they named me interim CEO. So uh, I really didn't want to do this job. The war is kind of, I'm hoping, like, please goons, just fall apart, please, so I can undo this stuff. Um, and for a little bit, it went okay. We, uh, we were in Aquarius, and we started taking systems there, and I was like, oh, we, we might actually do this. We might pull this out of a hat, like this disaster. And then August happened, and everyone decided, uh, we don't want to fight the war anymore. We're going to go back to our home regions. And I said, I don't have any home regions anymore. <laughs> so we lose the war, and uh, then they made me CEO for losing the war. 
So, right? So I, uh, you know, uh, here's a little picture of the Slack where I said, I'm now CEO of the Alliance, and the next thing is, we need to get the hell out of here. So this was a very troubling time because basically we had lost everything we owned in two regions, our home regions of Ketch and Impasse that we had had for about three years, and now we were losing everything in Quarius. And uh, it was really bad, and I didn't know if Bray was gonna survive, but I was gonna do my best. So I become CEO, and you think it's not a big deal because I had been interim CEO, but now they were really like, no, you're going to answer every single question about every little thing that happens. So this is what my day looks like in the morning, right? Uh, Discord goes crazy, and then we use Slack and Brave because we're modern thinkers. And, um, and I would have these routinely, like 99 plus, because it doesn't go any higher on the little red dot. And then suddenly I realized exactly what I was talking about here. Like, when I send a note to everyone in Brave, it goes to 3,574 people. And I don't know what really changed that day, but when I was interim CEO, they're like, okay, you're in charge, we'll kind of do what you want, and this kind of stuff like that. But when I was officially CEO, every little thing, every issue that had to be solved is on your plate. And this is the same thing for everybody who leads an alliance. Uh, when I was on the CSM, we would go to these CSM summit meetings in the before times, and uh, I'm sitting around the table with alliance leaders from pa Pandemic Horde, Test, uh, Imperium, and every morning, we'd flip open our laptops in the conference room before starting the CSM meetings, and it's just nothing but problems. And we joked about, like, let's just trade laptops and you solve my problems, and I'll save <laughs> your problems. Um, so the other thing that you don't really get, and uh, you know, I've talked to other leaders about this, is money is a big thing in EVE. Like, they don't like to, no one likes to talk about it, no one likes to talk about worrying about SRP. Every leader worries about SRP because a lot of players don't want to do things if they don't get SRP. So it's a big deal and you worry about money and suddenly you got to talk to the finance guy about the budget and the military guy wants seven keep stars and the, and the finance guy's like, you can't afford a POS. So, <laughs> so let's go to the first lesson, you know, really is honesty and authenticity. And, um, up to the leaks, I had a pretty good reputation of, of being kind of clear and honest and not really bullshitting people. Um, but you lose a lot of stature when you lie to people, right? And so what those leaks showed is I wasn't really telling the truth. Um, so my first thing for everyone is you have to be yourself. Now, every leader is going to be different because we're different human beings. I'm not going to be the Matani and the way he is. I'm not going to be Gobbins. I'm not going to be... Headliner, we all have our own personalities. You have to be honest to that personality, right? If I got up one Saturday morning and went on a one-hour show ranting and screaming about things, everyone would say, what the hell happened to Dunk? But Matani does it every weekend, and everyone's like, he's on point, he's on fire, this is awesome. So you have to be true to yourself, because people can tell the difference. We are these amazing... Uh, monkeys with clothes on that have been trained our entire lives to detect dishonesty. And the whiff of it, we're so good at it. You can tell by just looking at somebody like, oh, they move their eyes the wrong way, they're lying to me. So you have to be honest, you have to uh, tell people what's going on. And like I talked about, here's the lesson I learned. Uh, our Dirty Laundry aired in front of, I don't even know how many views that post got. Um, but we misled our people about what was actually going on, and it hurt us, and people left. So you can't do that. So you have to be honest uh, about what you're doing. So at the end of the war, um, I was at work all day. I knew the war was ending. I didn't think it was going to collapse that bad as it did. Um, so I had a little speech written to say to people, and I was wondering how is everybody else going to tell everybody these, this bad news that we just lost the war? And because of real life meetings, I was like one of the last Alliance leaders to tell people what was going on. So uh, here, before I give this talk, I'm gonna have a little sip of water here. So uh, I just told people the truth. The second line says, the war is over and we have lost. And uh, that, even now I can feel like my emotion uh, coming over me what it felt that day, because it sucked. There's no getting around it. But I had to tell people what was really going on. And uh, I hadn't heard what anyone else had said that day. I just said, I'm gonna tell them the truth. 
And uh, it talks about morale in these first few things, and I'll talk about morale later. But I had to be honest with people because that was the only, the only path out. I couldn't bullshit them and say, like, well, we killed a bunch of stuff, so um, it's fine. So um, I, I didn't think just by telling the truth it was going to be a big deal. But, but it ended up being a big deal. Like the number of people that reached out to me after I gave that speech and they heard it who were enemies. The person who wrote this was an initiative who had just lost all their space in Fountain and spent a whole bunch of time uh, burning down our space. They're like, you did a good thing. After I've spent a year and a half trying to burn them down, right? People appreciate honesty even if it's not your own group. And the currency of honesty and respect from your enemies is you can burn that up really quick. And as an alliance leader, you have to have people believe that you are telling the truth and you're going to keep your word. So uh, I can't stress it enough. And when I talk to other leaders of other alliances, they also stress this. You have to tell people the truth, right? As uh, Headliner and I just did a press interview, and we both agreed, like, as soon as people believe you're bullshitting them, they're going to run away. All right, next thing is about morale, and I've talked about morale before in my uh, C, uh, how to lead without being CEO, and morale won the war for the Imperium. It wasn't ships, it wasn't dreads, it wasn't titans, it was morale. And um, I had talked about it before, and I was sure the goons were gonna collapse in about two months, three months. How long could their morale, as everything just got eaten up? And it didn't, and it got stronger, and we had people on the inside, and I knew their morale was getting stronger. And I'm like, well, it's going to crack at some point. It's got to. It's got to crack. And it didn't. And they had achieved this amazing thing. I mean, I literally had like an article written that quoted the Matani in his article about fail skating, about like, look what happened to the, to the goons. And it didn't happen. And this, the war was not won on the battlefield. The war was won in morale. And I can't stress enough for leaders, if you can't keep your people committed and excited and doing things, you are going to lose everything. And that's what happened at the end of this war. A bunch of the people fighting, fighting the war just said, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm bored. I don't feel any urgency to do this thing. And then they walked away. And the war was over, and uh, we lost everything. So morale comes in a bunch of different ways. Um, there's propaganda you can do. There's just having a fleet, like, there's a picture here of us, like, just flying in a conga line around something, like, I don't know why people love to do that so much, but man, <laughs> you people love a conga line. Um, I think you gotta, you gotta celebrate your wins, like, even if it's a small thing, like, we kicked those four maulers' ass. Like, you have to celebrate your victories, and you have to talk about the people on your teams that do the hard work that goes into it. If you're not thanking your logistics people, if you're not thanking your IT people, if you're not thanking your, thanking your FTCs, the person who hits the SRP button, do you know what it's like to type in the SRP values manually because there's no ESI link? It's a goddamn pain in the butt. So you gotta, you gotta talk about um, what's happening with your morale. Um, and then uh, at the bottom of morale is emotion and how you feel. And uh, there's a quote by somebody important I can't remember. It's, no one remembers what you said, they remember how you, made, you made them feel, right? And it's very important. Uh, the video here, is, or the picture here, is from what we would call John Bellicose Day. So John Bellicose was a pilot in Brave in like our first year, and he lost his battle with depression, committed suicide, and uh, it was a bad day. And that's where the broadcast for reps thing got started, and I know his mom, Mom Bellicose, and every year, uh, we do a memorial, this Sino fleet. Uh, it usually runs for 24 hours, and uh, it's far more than just about John anymore, right? People come there, and it's about, I'm getting choked up. It's about everything they've lost, right? Everyone has lost somebody. Everyone can identify with this feeling of uh, loss and remembrance and depression and dealing with tough things, and those memories stick with people, and it's a big deal when you can evoke emotion in people. And this year, we thought 24 hours would be enough for you all to have John Bellicose Day. But no, it, would, it went, I think, 36 hours of people wanted to come and just light Sinos on a Fortazar to remember people and do this thing. And it was amazing. 
And uh, I think Wolfie's here in the audience. How many ships did you put on market? 300, 400? I mean, it was crazy. So you have to have uh, these emotional things, and you have to have empathy and understanding for people, because we're all humans. We're not all just, we just don't all play video games all the time. People go through a lot of stuff in this life. They lose jobs, they lose people, they're stuck in their house, their car got a flat tire. You, as leader, you have to carry a lot of that stuff. And it sucks and it's not really fun, but it's part of the job. Because people look up to you and they want your approval and they want your understanding. And so you have to have some way to shoulder that and make them feel that you care about them. And you have to actually do it because, again, if you're not honest about like your sympathy for people, that's like worse than lying to them. So uh, what else was I going to say about this? Uh, you can lose morale very quickly, like respect. You can lose it overnight. It takes a while to build it up. Uh, there's a lot of ways to build up morale. Um, every, everyone, right. Some good ones here. So, um, you know, propaganda plays a huge part in it, right? Again, uh, if you look at these two, you'll, you'll, you'll see the difference in them, right? The pappy propaganda is like, we're going to get the baddies, right? The Imperium one is, Gundor calls the Imperium needs you. It's an emotional thing, right? Like, you were a soldier, it's your time to stand up. Like, we need your help, you're valuable. And the emotional pull and the morale pull of those two different approaches is significant. Because they did this and it worked. They took the entire galaxy on and beat them because of posters like this. Because they got people who hadn't logged in in five years, 10 years to log in. And that's morale. We talked about emotion. Every group has their own, uh, I'll probably mispronounce it, so French speakers, close your ears, raison d'etre, like your reason for being, like what it is. Did I get okay with the French? No, all right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the frowny faces over there. I'm sorry, I'm poor American. Um, you know, you, every group has its own reason for being and what they think is important and stuff like that. In Bray, it's like I really want it to be about having fun. Like love, life can be hard and suffering and all that, and I want people to log in in the morning or the night and just have some fun. That's our thing. Every group is different, right? Uh, snuffed out is going to be one way. The Imperium is going to be another. Whatever you people do in wormholes, sex parties, whatever it is, I don't know. But it's a different thing. Um, and you got to reinforce that. you got to keep reminding people like what you're all about. Um, and if you start to see the like, failure cascade of doubt start to occur, you have to stop it right away. That's what happened at the end of the, the, the World War B, Vietnam, is people started to doubt that the goons could be beaten. And they're like, well, I'm going to get out of here. And then it cascaded. And it was one group and another group. And suddenly we had lost the war. So you always have to be raising morale. You have to think about it. You need good artists. You need people that understand the value of propaganda and morale. You need merch. I mean, it's, it's an important thing. All right. The next one is really, uh, it's really about trust. I put delegation because delegation is based on, on trust. Um, you, ha you cannot do all the things. You cannot carry the one ring into Mordor by yourself. You may feel like you have to do that and you're the only one you trust to do that, but it doesn't work. Uh, I tried it, doesn't work. Um, we lost the war. So the toughest thing is trusting people and trust is very important in EVE. Um, it, it's important at two levels for you. One, you have to trust your own people and you run the risk of being betrayed and you will be betrayed at some point. That's just EVE, what it is. But you have to start trusting more people to do things, or you, you will get burned out, or you will burn out other people. And this was really hard for me to do, because b b when the war was going on, before the war, there were only two of us in the entire alliance that did any of the infrastructure work of anchoring things and uh, fueling things. And man, I was tired of it, right? We had three regions we were trying to keep going. And you're just burning yourself out, and when you're the leader, you saw my Discord. I don't have time to fuel everything myself when I have to deal with that Discord. So you have to trust people. 
in your own group and be okay. Eventually, it's going to turn on you. It's not the end of the world. But you have to give them your trust before they, they really are going to move forward on it. The other part of trust is you're dealing with the other alliance leaders. And so um, I had known a bunch of the alliance leaders before uh, I became CEO, so I was kind of friendly with them. But I think the people, like, you don't understand, like, it's, like, when you're an alliance leader and you're not talking and you're talking to another alliance leader, it's not this formal thing. It's not, this is brave, actual, calling, pandemic horde, actual, like, it's not like that. It's just casual stuff, like, you've met these people, you've drank together, you know them, and your word is your bond for the most part. And so... If I'm going to talk to another alliance leader and I need a favor, and in Discord they say, yeah, I'll do that, I got your back, uh, you have to trust that they're going to do that because things could go horribly, horribly wrong. So you have to have this external trust to people who are your enemies, to people who are your friends and all this kind of stuff. And again, in EVE, so many people have been smacked so hard that you're wary of that stuff. But as alliance leader, you have to give the trust to other people first. I, I wasn't sure when I was selling keep stars because they were gonna get blown up otherwise, can I trust them to do the deal? This is a lot of ISK we're talking about. And I had to say, well, I don't really have any choice. They're just gonna blow it up otherwise. So uh, I sold the keep stars to people and we transferred it and uh, they gave me the money and I was like really happy that it worked. But it was the start of the trust thing you have to do. Um, in going forward. Um, I talked about the space work uh, for the CCP people in the room. There's a goddamn lot of space work. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, so, uh, space work is important, and because of the way the game is made, we do a lot of tricks to prevent stuff from getting stolen and flipped and all this kind of stuff. And so uh, there's no end to space work, um, whether it's you're working on the IT team and we have a constantly evolving ESI or you got to fuel things or like whatever it is, there's just a ton of space work to be done. You have to dole it out. You have to trust people to do it. Um, and you got to make sure you don't burn those people out. Um, this for me was the absolute hardest thing was to stop doing the thing I had been doing in EVE for like three or four years every day and just say, uh, is everything fueled? Yeah, yeah, we got a month's worth in. Uh, do we have enough liquid ozone? Yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it. And then to not go check, like, oh man, that was really weird. So giving up direct control of doing things is again, like in life, like in a real business, people get promoted up the food chain because they're do good at doing the job, but at a point they become the manager, they're not expected to do the job anymore. It's just like that in EVE. Um, you you kind of go up the food chain and then you're in charge and suddenly, uh, you know, you can't do that stuff anymore. All right, so I don't even know what time it is. I don't know if I blew through this too fast, uh, but I'm open to any kind of questions you want to ask. And I will, I, I will try to answer them. Check, check. Okay, good evening. Um, We've, uh, we, we monitor your channel a lot, so uh, although not in Brave. Um, in many alliances, the leader is the FC. What do you think about that? I think if it works for that group, it's probably a good thing. Uh, I, I can barely FC anything. I think the last thing I FC'd was like bringing Atrons into 1DQ. So, uh, again, it, it's very specific to your uh, group of what you're all about. Um, I, I don't know how people do the FCing and they do all the other stuff you need to do with CEO myself, but people obviously pull it off. So if it works for your group, go for it. Um, I personally can't do it. Um, I, I just can't pull that off. And I don't know how to FC well.
Hello, I'm Wick from Init. Um, sorry. First of all, thank, I, I would like to thank you for um, the way you behave in your SOTA, etc., that everybody can watch, and you always, always had a, a quite moderate uh, position and non-toxic, non etc., and as compared with some other alliance leaders who are constantly spinning their defeats. I think of you, Arcadius Sol, but I suppose he's not there today. <laughs> so, so I have just a, a very simple question, and I admit it's, it's not easy, but just yes or no. Um, do you think that Brave chose the correct side uh, during the war? And if, no, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, it's, it's, no, it's no, a no, fair no, question. It's well, I, actually, would you do the same if you were in the same situation, or would you, would you flip side? What, what do you think about that? Well, I have thought about this particular question an awful lot. Um, and I would like to say I would have been smart and known how things were going to go, and I would have said, like, well, we're going to opt out of this, right, in theory. But then I'm being very honest with myself. I, I was 100% sure that goon morale was going to crack, and I was going to scoop up all these corps. I had told the recruitment people, get ready, we're going to scoop up the corps. <laughs> hey, maybe let's go partner with initiative. Like, I was sure they were going to crack. So, while I'd like to say I would be super smart and I was forced into it and all this kind of stuff, I, I thought the morale would break. Like, how could it not? They were losing systems left and right, the amount of titans that were getting brought. Like, it just doesn't, like, it's a, it's a crazy thing that it went the way it did. I, I can't be honest in saying in hindsight, oh, yeah, I could have seen that coming. Like, nobody could have seen that coming. So, okay, thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> I, I don't know if you're recruiting. Do you have uh, any ideas or thoughts about uh, shares uh, as an line seal? Um, yeah, they're like shares. So the question is, is shares in the, so those that haven't seen the not touched since it launched uh, corporation panels in EVE, um, <laughs> there's this feature that probably made sense in the beginning that there were going to be shares of a corporation and we were somehow going to give dividends and it was going to be like a stock market and, you know, I think still, Hilmar still wants it to happen somehow, I don't know but it's like this most dangerous thing in the world because if you don't understand the mechanic and you get a director and they can like create shares and like, Dunk's going on holiday, let's take over the Alliance. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's just one of those like, Eve is hard, suck it up, but seems like a really weird feature that uh, has been uh, abused in the past that I, I, I would love to trade shares with a corp and have dividends work all that way, it's just, it's like about one-fifth baked at this time, 19 years later, so not a fan. Any other questions? Should... Oh, here they come. Um, I'm Sam Andy, I'm in, in it as well. Um, I just wondered, do you have any, how do you see the future of NullSec at the moment? Because Obviously, they're still, it's still crystallizing, shall we say, what's going to happen. Do you have any idea of and where do you see Brave in that future? You know, you seem to be getting solved and things again, which is great. And it's nice to see you building up. But is, you know, where do you see the political picture, if you like, of Eve at the moment? Well, for Brave right now, my sole goal is to not get evicted again. So <laughs> um, that, that's what I'm trying to do. And then um, for... Uh, the rest of EVE, and I've made my thoughts on this public so it's nothing new, right now, the way the game is designed and the mechanics of the design are, the optimal thing to do is to join the largest possible group you can. And so we've seen the creation of these mega coalitions. Um, you know, there's three or four major coalitions now that ha are just enormous. And um, it's hard to argue that it's not the right economic security, all the right move is to join one of these mega coalitions. Uh, if we hadn't been burnt so hard and so like, uh, you know, uh, damaged by what we did in the war, 
it would make sense to do it. So the game reinforces the idea that security is best when you have as many supers and titans as possible. Uh, you have the best uh, industry, you have the best things rigged because you have the money coming in. So right now, that's a game design thing that is reinforcing these mega coalitions. I have no idea how to fix it, but I just see that continuing on for the next, until something changes at that level. Go ahead. Um, Roa, so I, we know each other very well. So I have a couple questions for you. Um, first, what would be, in your eyes, the, your biggest failure and also your biggest success in game? Uh, biggest failure? Um, well, there's probably two things that come to mind. One is basically when we were falling apart and catch, like not being awesome to people about what was going on. Um, and then the second thing was jumping into M2 with my Titan. <laughs> um, I, yeah, yeah. I've only done the orc into build once. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is still what's going on now. Like uh, when it was last August and you were there, I didn't know that Brave was going to survive. We had lost every structure. We had lost corpse. Uh, Norman quit. Um, everything was falling apart. We didn't have a huge war chest of like ISK to, to lean on. And uh, I had to basically beg for some space just to like go to uh, from other groups. And if they had said no, I don't know what would have happened. The fact that it's what, nine months later, and we have a place to live, and we have some regions, and our, and our wallet's going up. In my view, it's a goddamn miracle, right? I kind of feel like I want to like, okay, like I want to finish the season and walk away as CEO, and like say somebody else handle the rest, right? Because, um, so just not falling apart. Like we watched so many groups in Legacy fall apart. We've seen other groups since the war ended that weren't even really in it fall apart. Like it's, uh, it's rough to keep an alliance together. And you, you, had, you had corpse leave, you had corpse not that many join, but it's getting better and there's constant change, right? Yeah, you gotta be okay with change. Yeah. Like it's gonna be constant. And, and the, other, the other question I have for you is that, um, like you, I'm, I'm Roa from, from Industrial uh, Mining and Mayhem. My son and I started the corp together, so we kind of have some of the ex shared experiences that you're talking about as an alliance CEO, but just as CEO in, in our corp. And so I know that in game, you have different aspects and different viewpoints of how the game is. If you're a pirate, you have specific. If you're an industrialist, you have this view. What's the biggest thing that you would like to see changed in game uh, with your viewpoint as a CEO of an alliance? Um. Well, the easy answer is like, I'd love to see the M3 of everything in the game smaller to make hauling easier. But um, <laughs> take note, devs, the popularity of that. So you want to you be Ant-Man of, of uh, the, Yeah, I would like that? the Ant-Man Ray. Um, I think, and, and again, I don't have a, an answer to this, right? Like, uh, Brave is a big group. I, I can't complain that we weren't given a fair share, but we got by because I had a reserve of people that, like, we lost a bunch of people, but I still had enough people to defend things and we could anchor Fort as ours and do stuff. If you're starting a new alliance, if you're starting a new corp, and you're trying to do some of these things in EVE right now, like anchor a Fortizar, unless you're beholden to someone, unless you have an agreement with someone, it's not happening. And so there's like a gap between the people who have enough power to play the big game in EVE and then everybody else. And then, you know, my concern with these new structure changes is it's really hard to make the leap to I don't have any space, I don't have any solve to I can anchor a Fortizar. Like that gap is a big gap. So I don't know how to solve it, but I think that's what I would like to see is that 100 people could get together and take some space and do some stuff and have fun and get into the, into the, into the big game of Eve. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. All right, any other questions or? Do you see an opportunity with the uh, announced faction warfare development uh, outline 
for a group like yours to see a resurgence in sort of a feeder and, and new player development corporation with how faction warfare is going to be, you're going to allow to be dedicated your alliance or other groups to faction warfare in the future? Uh, the, the devil's in the details. I'm real excited to see, you know, what the idea is. If there's the ability to, uh, hey, I'm in Brave, but I want to go also fight for the Kaldari, and that's just my personal choice, and it doesn't trigger the whole alliance, can't go into Gal uh, Calente space, it might be awesome. Uh, I think the devil's in the details. Uh, instantly when I heard it, uh, when Aurora was talking about it, was, I'm going to have one pilot on the Galente side and another pilot on the Caldari side, and they're going to fight each other, and then they're going to argue, and then they're going to come to me to solve the problem. <laughs> so I think, I, think there's, I think there's HR managers across New Eden right now just, like, face-palming, like, how, like, they can't even mine in the same system. What are we going to do <laughs> with factional warfare? I have another one. Um, is there like a leader back channel where you guys bring each other problems and speak somewhat off the record? Like if you say, my alliance or coalition is having this problem and I want to know ways to solve it and you can actually talk to these other leaders without them going back to their corporation saying, how do we exploit this? Is there any discussion about learning from each other from that or is Eve way too it's, cutthroat it's, at that it's level? It's far too Machiavellian. Like, for that. I mean, everything is a transaction, right? Like, if I want some information from Noras, like, it, I got to give some information back. Like, it's transactional. It's Machiavellian. We can still be friends and respectful uh, to each other, but it's not, it's, it's not like we're holding hands in preschool and, like, let's solve the problems. Um, I, I'm just being honest. Like, everyone wants an advantage. Everyone wants a leg up. Um, you will... Uh, do a lot of, you know, hey, did you see this cool thing that happened? And that starts a conversation, then you slide in what you actually need to know. There's a, there's a lot of that kind of stuff, right? Or you get on the CSM and get them drunk at night and ask them questions. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, here. So the, the question was, have you ever had an off-the-record uh, conversation had it respected? It does happen to some degree if you can agree to it. Those will typically not be in Discord, in chat, where someone can screenshot it. It would typically be, hey, let's just talk on the phone about this, and then you'll have a voice conversation with someone, right? Um, so it does happen. Um, you know, l last night we were at the Lebowski bar, and... There's a bunch of influential people hanging out drinking beers with their heads together like it's, you know. Yeah, so it does, it, does, it does happen from time to time. It's just not the norm, and I could never go to somebody. If it was a broad problem like, hey, the ESI is messed up. How did you guys solve it? Like, yeah, I can ask that. I, I can't say, like, uh, this FC did this. How do you treat FCs that suck? Like, like you can't ask that. <laughs> Yeah, all FCs are awesome. Um, I have a question about inactives. Yes. So when you notice that uh, players are not logging in, or maybe corps, entire corps aren't logging in, uh, what do you think is the right amount of time to wait to see if they come back? Um, so on, on the one hand, you might think, oh, it's nice to have lots of numbers in my corp or my alliance. Uh, but on the other hand, if you notice that people aren't logging in, you kind of want to kick them, maybe. Uh, what's the right... Uh, how do you deal with the inactives? I, I'm probably the wrong person in the wrong alliance to ask this question, because we're notorious for having not had any kind of activity kick or things like that. We just recently did do one, though, because, like, our numbers on Dotlan of how many people we had didn't really reflect. So I think we went back, like, two years. If you hadn't logged in in, like, two years... Uh, and you didn't, like for us, it's like if you don't have a title or we didn't have some reason that you were like part of the original crew or that like trying to, you have a Titan or a Super somewhere, we, um, we were like, we're going to do this thing. If it's your alt, like let us know. And then we purged several thousand people uh, in a day. So we don't do it as religiously as some groups. Um, other groups are just absolutely by the book ruthless about it. And it works for them, but 
it's just a lot of goddamn work to keep track of, like, <laughs> who logged in when and, you know, whose alt is this? But, um, and then the funny thing is every once in a while we'll do a purge, and then I'll get a note from somebody in another line. It's like, man, you kicked my spy. You know, <laughs> he'd been there for years, you know. Okay. Other topics? All right, I think uh, we're going to wrap. Oh, you have a question? The question is, how are my bees? My bees are very good. Uh, I'm gonna, when I go home, I'll be able to go inspect them and see how they're doing. I have very good climate for my bees, so they're uh, pulling in honey already, which is awesome. Um, I wish I was hearing for more. Evidently, there's Icelandic beekeepers, so I would love to see that. Okay. With that, I will wrap this up. I really appreciate you coming, sitting through the uh, technical difficulties at the beginning. Have a great fan fest. Thank you. <laughs>